A hearty welcome to all of you. I am here to talk about abiotic and biotic factors of water which are necessary for the life of fish. During our early education, we all have learned rhymes or poems. There is a very famous rhyme which I think everyone has learned or heard. Machli jal ki rani hai, jeevan uska pani hai, haat lagao to dar jayegi, bahar nikalo to mar jayegi. Means, fish is the queen of water. Without water, it cannot live, it cannot survive and it dies as soon as taken out from it. So, it was clear to us that the fish cannot live without water but it's important to know that there are some factors of water which is essential for a fish to stay comfortable and relaxed in water. Factor means anything that contribute to a result. In this lecture, I will tell you about the abiotic and biotic factors of water necessary for the life of fish. Fish comprise a diverse range of water dwelling creatures. They are classified as freshwater or salt water based on their habitat and this is a key difference between salt water and freshwater fish. However, there are additional notable distinction when we compare freshwater and salt water fish. In fact, fish are the most diverse animal species which has evolved to live successfully in its specific underwater environment from streams, rivers and lakes to the vast expanse of the ocean. According to FishBase, which is a global species database of fish species used by the researchers and zoologists, it is the largest and most ex extensively assessed online database students can assess by visiting the site. It provides information on taxonomy, geographical distribution, biometrics, morphology, behavior, habitat, ecology, population dynamics, reproductive, metabolic and genetic data. There is also access to tools such as trophic pyramids, identification keys, biogeographical modeling and fishery statistics. As of November 2018, it included description of 34,000 different type of fish. In spite of thousands of different species with various adaptation, all fish share some common evolutionary adaptation that helps them to survive in their watery domain. There are some common traits across these aquatic animals. However, however there are some exceptions to these rules. So, the common traits are water habitat. All fish live in water. But there are some fish that can spend significant amount of time out of water. One thing to note here is that while all fish live in water, not everything that lives in water is a fish. For example, whales and dolphins are mammals, turtles are reptiles, not fish, but they live in water. Gills they allow fish to absorb oxygen from water and release carbon dioxide which allows them to breathe underwater. It is interesting to note that all fish have gills but not everything that has gills is a fish. Fish have gills throughout their lifespan while other lose them at some point of life like in tadpoles which have gills but they eventually lose them when they metamorphose into frog. Next is the swim bladder. These are the specialized organ filled with air and present in all fish that helps them to maintain a stable buoyancy in the water. It allows the fish to sleep without sinking to the bottom of water. Next is the presence of fins. The pectoral and pelvic fins allow fish to maintain stability while dorsal and ventral fins reduce the rolling motion. And the most important trait of all fish is that they are cold-blooded. 
means they are unable to regulate their body temperature their body temperature changes as the temperature of the environment changes so fish species are extremely sensitive to these temperature changes and only able to exist in a specific water temperature this is called optimum temperature range which means that a particular fish grows best at temperature within that range all the metabolic activities feeding breathing respiration physiological activities are influenced by the temperature with the rise in temperature the oxygen content of the water get reduced here is a list of some species of fish and their optimum temperature range when the temperature goes higher or lower than the optimum fish will not grow eventually if the temperature goes too high or too low the fish will die indian major carps are able to tolerate a wide range of temperature but many exotic species for example grass carp do not survive at higher temperature so the knowledge of the range of temperature variation is very necessary the temperature is one of the most important abiotic factor which influences the vital activities of the fish another abiotic factor is dissolved oxygen aquatic animals use oxygen dissolved in water oxygen primarily enters water via diffusion from the surrounding air and from the photosynthesis by the aquatic plants dissolved oxygen is measured in units of milligrams per liter or as a part of percentage of saturation the temperature and salinity of water influences the oxygen holding capacity warm water holds less dissolved oxygen than cold water because the molecules are moving faster than in cold water fresh water can hold more dissolved oxygen than salt water because salt water has less space for oxygen molecules due to sodium and chloride ions it contains therefore the warmer and saltier the water the less dissolved oxygen it will contain oxygen is added to water at the surface where gases in the atmosphere comes into contact with it therefore the movement of water from wind and waves can help the water to oxygenate here the picture shows the range of tolerance of dissolved oxygen for fish the generally accepted minimum amount of dissolved oxygen that supports a large population of various fish is from 4 to 5 mg per liter and when it drops below 3 mg per liter even the hardy fish dies another important factor is ph hydrogen ion concentration ph is an important water quality parameter it shows how acidic or basic a water body is the amount of hydrogen ion activity in water determines the level of ph on a scale from 0 to 14 just known as ph scale 7 is considered as neutral the lower the ph value the more acidic the water is aquatic animals and plants are adapted to a certain ph range most of freshwater aquarium fish do best at ph between 6.5 to 8 although certain fish require higher or lo lower levels an increase or decrease in ph outside the normal range of water body can be detrimental to organism depending on their sensitivity fish begin to die when ph falls below 4 Here is another image which shows pH range that supports aquatic life. Next factor is turbidity. It is often used as a proxy for water clarity. Technically, what turbidity means? 
and this is a measure the intensity of light scattered by particles in the water sample at 90 degree incident to a light source particles present in water such as clay silt sand algae plankton microorganism and other matter scatter the passage of light through the water to a naked eye turbidity appears as cloudy or muddy water so it's important to measure turbidity because at certain levels typically at higher levels it can impact or affect a water body it reduces the amount of light passing through water from the surface and in turn it can reduce the rate of photosynthesis and therefore the dissolved oxygen level also decreases when oxygen content decreases it results in the rise of water temperature it can affect fish also by clogging the fish gills by suspended material so all these are abiotic components of water now we will see the biotic factors biotic factor is any living part of the environment not all freshwater ecosystem have the exact same biotic factors present in it organism within those ecosystem will depend on abiotic factors that are determined mostly by the climate and geographical location but there are few major biotic factors that almost always shape the aquatic ecosystem the us geological survey concentrated on the three main biotic factors of water including algae fish and invertebrates algae might appear to be a type of plant and it falls under the kingdom protista they have chloroplast in their cells which means they are autotrophs that perform photosynthesis they are also sometimes called as phytoplankton algae in lakes ponds and other freshwater environment are essential for the flow of energy into the freshwater ecosystem they uses the light of sun in order to make glucose which provides the base of food pyramid for the entire ecosystem without algae little energy would be able to enter the freshwater ecosystem and the ecosystem would likely to collapse here the image shows common type of photosynthetic algae that are found in freshwater ecosystem here is a list of some common invertebrates found in freshwater ecosystem and a biotic factor specific example includes fish they are the most well known biotic factor in freshwater ecosystem they eat algae aquatic plants worms and other smaller fish invertebrates etc here are some common examples of course fish algae and invertebrates are not the only organism that lives in fresh water here are the list of some other common freshwater species that are biotic factors in the aquatic environment so there are thousand of species that call aquatic areas their home and thus it is impossible to list them all but this will gives you a general idea of what biotic factors make up the aquatic environment so it can be concluded that the quality of water is very important in aquaculture as the poor quality can affect the health and growth of aquatic animals we have seen in the presentation that optimal water quality varies by species and therefore monitor to ensure the growth and survival of organism water quality parameters that we have discussed include temperature dissolved oxygen ph turbidity must be monitored and it's very important to establish standardized water quality testing protocol and know the tolerance range for the species to culture these are the references 
थैंक यू